Hello, hello. Today, we're going to talk about the current CV... <laughs> what was that? I found myself channeling for a minute. I was starting to sound a little like WoW's PC. And then again, this is starting to feel a little like WoW's PC. Yikes. Well, don't worry. We'll be getting to that, but... Let's first address the other topic that I feel is getting buried under the mountains of negative feedback Weechi has been taking like a champ due to their CV rework. Let's talk about what would have been the huge and major change this update if it alone were the only change, and that's the spotting changes made to the planes on cruisers and battleships. Now me personally, I think this was more of an unintended consequence of spaghetti code rather and rather than finding a fix, Ouija said, screw it, let's just test it live. But I'm here to tell you, if you should find yourself in a non-CV match, which is becoming more common again as the novelty wears off, though I expect it will be atrocious this weekend, should be a fun stream, but if you find yourself in one of those matches or on a flank with no destroyer, Bask in the glory of zero spotting. <laughs> in the power ballad words of Cinderella, you don't know what you got till it's gone. So here I am, spotting with a Petro. Ah, gone are the days of popping a plane to spot battleships firing their guns. Gone are the days of catching ships rushing you around the corner of a mountain. And gone is the map knowledge. Gone is that one half percent chance of your plane spotting torps for you, and all of that has now been compacted into the role of a destroyer. And if your destroyer pops smoke and sits in it, gone baby gone. If your destroyer rushes ahead of their support and loses, gone. And in the past, where that would definitely be a loss to your morale, and you did need to adjust your gameplay accordingly, it was possible to still win that side, but now it kind of feels like an insurmountable odd. Now we do know that Ouija has more changes planned. I have no ideas what they are, but I do have a suggestion, not that it matters, as whatever they have planned is whatever they're going to do. But what they should do, in my opinion, is offer some ships a new plane type. One that is similar to the old spotting plane, though I do think it'd be pretty nifty if it had enhanced destroyer detection as a way to counter our silly destroyer concealment. And then they can tweak the old spotter plane or finer plane enhanced abilities for AA as well as being used for premium ammo. I mean, Arthas the Cold. That way, people are giving up something for something else and others are giving up that thing for something else. Because this game needs spotting. I have played all sorts of ships this week trying to see how viable they can be in this brave new world and let me tell you, it is not good. Balance is all out of whack right now and the viable ship selection, it's worse than ever. So there's my hope. Now let's pack that in a pipe and smoke it. <laughs> all right, let us talk CVs. First, CV spotting. Now on paper, I like all of these changes made. Minimap spotting only for CV planes, that provides amazing info. Even if I can't physically target something, seeing even the class of what is heading my way allows me to prepare. Not spotting torps, I'm fine with that. But trying to decipher on the minimap what is spotted by a CV and what is hard spotted is an absolute nightmare. I see a ship spotted on the minimap, I switch to overhead view and try and locate it, and nothing. <laughs> Rinse and repeat, all while just dodging. I think it was Tommy Boy who suggested making CV spotted ships a different color on the minimap, and me, I think that's a great idea. Maybe too great. <laughs> I could also see them doing it as a faded color, but color selection and readability, well, that has never been a strong suit of our developer locked in the closet with the Mountain Dew Code Red Drip mainline. But I do think something definitely needs to be done there. And maybe a CV plane should be able to, I don't know, transmit a spotted ship if it's within a certain distance, like under 10 kilometers. I'm not sure, but I am sure that when a destroyer is spotted at five and a half kilometers away from me by a CV plane, and I can't shoot them, that isn't an enjoyable experience. And nor 
do I think that that would make CVs more OP? But you know what makes CVs OP? Everything else. <laughs> well, okay, not everything. The fuel changes, I think, are quite good. I think there's a lot of room to mess with and tweak numbers and be able to differentiate between nations, but ultimately, Ouija has just made them too strong. They are roughly 10% faster, the planes, so they take less AA damage. They're more accurate along with dropping more ordinances. How much more accurate? Twice as much. <laughs> larger squadrons for more strikes. How much larger? About 33%. <laughs> and they, of course, have a onboard plane factories capable of building an entire new plane before a French battlecruiser can reload its gun. Put that baguette down, Jean-Luc. So, I did say in the last stream that I thought this was going to be pretty bad. But who could have predicted how bad it would be? Maybe the people who tested it? It didn't get tested? <laughs> Wait... We're the super testers now? Can I get a super tester camo, please? So now they have CVs that are self-spotting flying cruisers or flying battleships capable of firing with great accuracy. A salvo from, eh, we'll just say 20-ish kilometers away that will either half health you and leave you on fire if you're lucky or three-quarter three health you and leave you with a flood if you're unlucky. All while you're just trying to decipher on the mini-map who you can or can't even shoot at. All while the CV knows anything they spot they can drop with impunity because who cares if your planes are shot down when you've got six new ones waiting for you in a couple minutes. But I'm not here to beat a dead horse myself. I don't sell that to my customers as elevated gameplay. I'm here with some ideas. Ideas for Ouija to ignore because they have a roadmap and they're going to stick with it. What I would like, and this is just a rough idea I came up with this week while trying to figure out what the heck is going on here, but what I would like is for CVs to have a role. I'm happy with their reduced spotting. I'm happy with their fuel. I'm happy with Ouija trying to give them more engagement and make them more popular. That's fine. They have dozens of premium CVs to sell to those who want them, and before very few people played them so trying to get them more popular to keep the development of this game going that's all good but their role shouldn't be dpm that role's already taken that is the role of a light cruiser what i would like is for cvs to have a shifting role over the duration of a match the first priority would be their new limited spotting on the way to support a destroyer. The destroyer approaches a cap, a CV through spotting warns them with that limited info what is coming and the DDs and their other support can position accordingly. On the opposite side, a uh, red DD pushes forward with cruiser and battleship or whatever in tow to support and said DDs are supported with AA. That is how they fight carriers who are harassing DDs. They fight them with the AA support of their support ships. Meanwhile, the support ships are taking fire from the opposite team, which of course causes hull damage. It's knocking out AA, etc., etc. And after enough AA is knocked out, the CV can now help support whatever's left by attacking the larger ships. As a concession, I would be fine with a larger squadron or very tanky planes, but I want planes shot down to matter. I want managing your hangar to be a skill for CV players. I'm fine with them getting better concealment. If that means they need to be closer. I'm fine with many things, but a CV strength is in its squadron, so losing those needs to have a greater impact than them taking damage to their hull. Hell, give them a heal. If a ship can lose its turrets, a CV should be able to lose their means to attack too. It should be difficult, but it shouldn't be impossible. But jerk, once we're spotted, we could be instantly destroyed. Yeah, just like every other ship can be. Why do we need to protect one class? If a CV is going to have such a large potential impact on the game, then the skill floor needs to be raised up high enough to account for that. And I'm okay with that. But I know who's not. 
Johnny 49% win rate. And that is ultimately what this comes down to. Ouija needs to expand the CV player base to make more money. And they want to mix up the <coughs> meta of this game after five years. That's cool. I don't work for free. I don't expect them to either. And let's be real. Many of us old timers have been asking for a big change for at least two years. But this update... Once upon a time, the mantra of Ouija was small changes, monitor the impact, respond accordingly, and the community complained. More balance changes, more ships, etc., etc., and I don't think the community was wrong either. But what the community wants isn't exactly good business. Balance changes? That don't make money. They keep customers happy, but they don't draw in new revenue streams. And Ouija's ultimate goal is to make a product they like, and to make money that the customers like and are happy to spend their money on. And I think this update, this update really dropped the ball on much of that. Now I've seen many posts on Discord and Reddit and I'm sure there are plenty more on uh, Facebook or whatever kids are using these days, the TikTok, of players saying that they quit. Do they? I feel like I recognize some names that have been quitting for years, <laughs> but it is one thing to say that you will, and it is another to say, I wish I could quit you. And that is ultimately what this comes down to. If player numbers drop, if revenues drop, that gets the quickest response. I'm not here to bash. I honestly believe that at least for Legends, they want to make a good fun game and I think they're trying to mix it up like the players have wanted for a long time. I'm not sure if they anticipated this much backlash and judging by the radio silence I'd say probably not. But I mean, what are they gonna say? Let's remember something here too. Players can't even rent legendary tier carriers yet and that's the biggest shit show of them all. So what does old Uncle Jerk recommend? Oh, I don't know. The weather's warming up here in Los Angeles. Might be good for me to get down to the coast for some beach volleyball. But for you, if you're upset, vote with your wallet. Because that feedback goes straight to the top. But at least I did my part this match. We took out that carrier. And now with that carrier gone, I get to take out this Montana because no class should be allowed to attack me multiple times after they've been sunk, right? <laughs> oh, right. GG, Hakuryu. You managed to get sunk on the back of the map and still be able to attack. Well, this pretty much wraps up this match, right? Yeah. So let's just go ahead and jump to the end and see how we could do being bottom tier in a legendary carrier map. Let's see this elevated gameplay that I was promised in the trailer, whether you're manning them, fighting alongside, or fighting against them. Elevated gameplay, 3,200 something XP. Wow, what a great time.